Welcome back to Nibbles and Bites. You've caught me in the middle of prepping this heat kit H11A for VCF Southwest. I'm hoping to demonstrate this and the paper tape punch during the show. But it's not the only thing I'll be doing. I'm also planning on doing some live basic programming on an IBM PS2, as well as participating in a Q&A session with Bill Hurd. Needless to say, I'm pretty nervous, but I'm also looking forward to seeing all of you and finally getting some face-to-face -face time with the creator of the 128 himself. In the process of getting ready for VCF, I figured it would be good to have some business cards to hang out and thought, hey, wouldn't it be neat if we had a program on the back that people could type in at the monitor? Let's head over to the 128D and walk through how I managed to create this tiny program and some of the challenges that I ran into along the way. First and foremost, I wanted this program to be entered entirely at the monitor. This limited my options somewhat, so I decided to make a very simple scroller. First off, I wanted to fill the screen with something nibbles and bytes related, so I chose the short string n, ampersand, and b. To make the screen scroll vertically, we increment the VIX scroll y register seven times and roll over to zero. This only accomplishes the effect halfway though, so we have to shorten the borders on the top and bottom as well to make it look like it's actually scrolling infinitely. The effect is similar to how chase lights look to the human eye. The pattern is uniform, so it only looks like it's scrolling infinitely. So now that we have the theory, let's get to the program. The start of the program should be pretty familiar to those of you who have followed me for a while. It's just the screen clearing program that we've seen a few times before. The difference here this time is that we're filling a pattern from RAM. First off, the program sets up Y as an offset into RAM, starting at 4. We'll go into the reason why in a minute. We then initialize X to 0, and then start our loop by loading data from this weird location in memory below. Now hang on a minute. Why is this loading code into the A register? Let's give it a run so we can see what happens. The code actually does what we want it to do. But why? Those two instructions, starting at 131E, actually happen to be our data for filling the screen. If we look at the screen codes for the letters N and B, it becomes a little more obvious. Each letter corresponds to a number, but each of these numbers, save one, corresponds to a 6502 instruction as well. Since I wanted this to be enterable at the monitor prompt, it seemed like a good idea to use the data as instructions. Now that we know what we're loading, after the load, we then store that character into screen RAM. Since the data is stored in reverse order, and we want to check for a zero as an optimization, we decrement y by one. If y reaches zero after the decrement, then we reset its value to the initial value of four. Otherwise, we jump over that LDY instruction, increment our offset into screen RAM, and then jump back to the top of the loop until we've copied the pattern 256 times 4, or 1024 times. At this point, we've copied the entire pattern to screen RAM, and we just need to skip past the pattern data. So finally, we jump to location 1323 hex, which contains the break instruction at the moment. Now let's get into the fun part of the program, the scroller. The first thing that we want to do is ensure that our screen scrolls at a nice and smooth rate with no tearing. So the first thing we do in our scroll loop is pull the VIX raster register in a tight loop. Normally you would do this from a raster interrupt, but since this is typed in at the monitor, this will have to suffice. Next, we count down from the 0e hex value we loaded from the raster register. This delays the loop a little and seems unnecessary at first, but we'll get to that later. Next, we clear the carry register for an add later, and store cc hex in the scroll x register. This needs a little explaining. The pattern we drew isn't centered. I thought it would be nice to center that by adjusting the scroll x position by about half the width of a character, or 4 pixels. The value really only needs to be 0c hex, since the bits we actually care about are in the lower nibble. CC is what I read during a memory dump when writing this program, so that's what I decided to use here. Next, we load 10 hex into A and add 1 to it before finally storing the value in the scroll Y register. 
in this case, the upper nibble of scroll Y controls several things we don't really want to turn on, so using a value of 1 in the upper nibble is safe here. Since we're looking to increase the size of the border too, we also clear the vertical height bit. Now here's where the real fun begins. We get to use self-modifying code. In this case, the next thing we do is decrement the operand of that ADC instruction above. In effect, that one operand is our counter, and will continuously decrease from 7 to 0. When it decrements to 0, we simply reset the value to 7 by storing to that location again. Finally, we jump back to the top of this segment of code to repeat for the next frame. Okay, so now that we know what this does, let's give it a shot. Yes! All right. Okay, so it's scrolling smoothly. The next thing is we need to shorten it a little more. There's some extra bits in here we can change. The first part we can change is that delay that I mentioned in the beginning. Originally, I put this in here to make the program work the same between the non-cycle-exact Vi simulator and the real hardware. To remove this delay, we can simply overwrite the DEX instruction with the BEQ to jump over the next instruction. By removing it, we save two extra lines from the business card. In theory, this delay shouldn't affect anything, but in practice, removing it results in the scroll speed nearly doubling. Part of the reason why this occurs is because we're not checking the ninth bit of the raster register, which means that our code to adjust the scroll Y register occurs twice. I'm not totally sure about why the delay fixes this, but I think it's because we are pulling the raster register, adjusting the scroll Y register, and not disabling interrupts. What's your theory? I'd be curious to find out in the comments. The other change we can make is the raster line which we trigger on. Right now, we're triggering on raster line 14, which is inside the top border and also below the bottom border when the ninth bit is set. Instead, we can use raster line 255, or FF hexadecimal. This raster line is also inside the lower border and will only match once, since the maximum number of raster lines on both NTSC and PAL machines is less than 512. Incidentally, this is also the technique that the 128's basic ROM uses for its internal interrupt handlers. Okay, so with these fixes, we should see a very nice smooth scrolling result. Yes! Now that's much smoother. That's exactly what I'm after. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Nibbles and Bites. Hopefully in the next couple of episodes we'll cover more interesting things. Uh, I'm looking to maybe work on the MMU, hopefully on the VDC for a change. That would be pretty nice. Uh, a couple of small announcements. Uh, aside from going to the VCF Southwest event that's happening up in Dallas uh, in June, um, I'm also going to be showing up at VCF Midwest. Mostly the same equipment, same demonstrations. Um, so if you don't catch me at v VCF Southwest, then you can definitely catch me over at uh, VCF Midwest. Um, also, if you're looking for the source code for this program, you can find it on the back of my business card, of course, uh, or you can go to the nibblesandbites.net website and uh, download the source code there. Aside from that, um, well, I'll catch you in the next episode. See you!